Welcome to Science Tree Channel and today's topic is Physical and Chemical Properties of Alkanes. So let's dive into the topic. Physical Properties of Alkanes Now alkanes form a homologous series of compounds. The word homologous means same. Now here group CH2 is repeating again and again. So that's why we use the word homologous for hydrocarbons. First four members of the series are gases. Methane, ethene, propane and butane. Why? Because as less number of carbon atoms representing less molecular weight. So definitely lower the molecular weight it will be gases and alkanes consisting of carbon 5 to carbon 10 are liquids while the higher members are solids. So with the increase in molecular weight it changes from gas to liquid and from liquid to solid. Alkanes are non-polar compounds. Why they are considered as non-polar compounds? Although carbon belongs to group number 4A and hydrogen belongs to group number 1. So why there is a less electronegativity difference between carbon and hydrogen? Hydrogen belongs to group number 1 because it has one electron and its outermost shell. But please remember most of its properties resemble with non-metals. And here is the question that why alkanes are non-polar. So the carbon-hydrogen bond is between carbon and hydrogen. And here is an example of methane. This bond is a covalent bond. What it means? It means that carbon shares its outer valence electrons with up to four hydrogens. This completes both of their outer shells, making them stable. Carbon follows octet rule and hydrogen follows duplet rule. Now, both of their outer shells making them stable, carbon-hydrogen bonds have a bond length of 1.0. 0.09 angstrom and the bond energy of about 413 kilojoule mole inverse. The electronegativity difference is very less. Carbon has electronegativity value of 2.55 and that of hydrogen 2.2. So the electronegativity difference between these two atoms is just about 0 0.35 and because of this small difference in electronegativity value the carbon hydrogen bond is generally regarded as being non-polar. They are insoluble in water. So now as we know that alkanes are non-polar compounds. So how they could be dissolved in a polar substance? We have a universal rule that like dissolve like. Polar compounds dissolve in polar substances and the non-polar one in non-polar. So soluble in organic solvents. Alkanes are soluble in organic solvents. Density means heaviness and it's directly proportional to molecular size. More the weight, more will be the density. So higher alkanes have higher densities. Now this is very important question from exam point of view. Why? Higher molecular weight alkanes have high melting and boiling points. 
due to high attractive forces between the molecules of alkanes and with the increase in number of carbon atoms alkane changes from gas to liquid and from liquid to solid indefinitely it requires more heat to melt solid than to liquid so that's why with the increase in molecular weight melting in boiling points increases with the increase in molecular size alkane becomes more viscous and viscous means become more heavy uh, fear felt more difficult to flow out alkanes become less flammable means more difficult to burn with increase of molecular size as we know that with the increase in molecular size they changes from liquid to solid and it's difficult to burn a solid than to a gas requires more energy to burn a solid so that's all about physical properties and now we'll going to move towards the chemical reactions of alkanes alkanes are least reactive compounds being saturated hydrocarbons and the word saturated means that there is no more space already accommodated and who had accommodated carbon atoms in case of alkanes all is hydrogen however they give reactions at high temperature high temperature is required to break the bonds between carbon and hydrogen because there is a single bond and this bond is a sigma bond quite strong one and difficult to break most important reaction of alkenes is halogenation and the word halogenation means that alkenes have to welcome halogen so when one of the hydrogen atom of saturated hydrocarbon are replaced with halogen it will be termed as halogenation a very important point about alkanes is that alkanes give only substitution reactions why because alkanes are saturated every side is taken by hydrogen and it's not possible to add any other element without removing hydrogen as hydrogen is forming single bond with carbon in alkanes no more species available so we have to go with substitute we have to go with substitution reactions first of all remove hydrogen and then add any other element alkanes react fairly with hydrogens in diffused sunlight in dark there is no reaction in direct sunlight reaction is explosive and carbon is deposited so most of the halogenation reaction takes place in the presence of diffused sunlight now in the case of bright sunlight methane reacts with chlorine but in bright sunlight we will get deposited carbon and an acidic behavior by getting hydrochloric acid and definitely it's explosive in the case of diffused sunlight the reaction occurs in steps methane reacts with chlorine substitution reaction takes place chloromethane formed now in case of chloromethane what is happening here one of the hydrogen of methane is removed changing it into methyl and now space is formed for one of the chlorine atom here in the place of hydrogen chlorine will take its place and that hydrogen will form a bond 
with other chlorine atom and gives hydrochloric acid in the byproduct. So this will form chloromethane. Now in the next step, chloromethane will be taken in reactants. Again, react with the molecule of chlorine in the presence of diffused sunlight. And we will get one other product that is dichloromethane. Again, one of the hydrogen will be removed from methyl group and it will change into CH2. This space will be taken by chlorine and form dichloromethane. Byproduct is hydrochloric acid. Now this dichloromethane reacts with halogen, chlorine. One of the hydrogen atom will be removed and the place will be taken by chlorine atom. Now hydrogen is removing and chlorine is adding. So this is substitution. Hydrogen is substituted by chlorine giving trichloromethane chloroform and the byproduct is HCl. Now again trichloromethane will be taken in reactants. React with chlorine to give tetrachloromethane with HCl. Every time we removed one hydrogen and add one chlorine. So the reaction occurs in steps. Here we do substitution reaction and this is halogenation. Addition of halogen in place of hydrogen. A very important chemical reaction of alkenes giving us different products. And the most important product is chloroform, tetrachloromethane and so many others. Next reaction which is mentioned in book is combustion and combustion means to burn. Alkanes burn in the presence of excess of air or oxygen to produce a lot of heat, carbon dioxide and water. This reaction takes place in automobile combustion engines domestic heaters and cooking appliances. Combustion is an exothermic reaction. Exo means to move out and thermic means heat. So this is a reaction in which heat is move out. In excess supply of oxygen, methane reacts with oxygen. A simple reaction, most of the Sui gas which we used in our homes consists of methane. It is made up of 80% methane. And when we use to burn it in the presence of oxygen, it gives us carbon dioxide, water and heat. We use this heat to cook our food. And carbon dioxide is also produced. Water is present in the form of vapors. That's why we are not able to recognize it at that time. While in the limited supply of oxygen, combustion occurs. But when methane reacts with oxygen in limited supply of oxygen, we will not get carbon dioxide, water and heat. It will change into carbon monoxide, carbon and water. So these are the two reactions related to combustion and very important in chemical reactions of alkanes. Thank you so much. For more videos, keep watching. Have a great day.